Bone marrow is a very special food to any human alive right now. It's safe to say bone marrow and brain tissue that were enclosed in the bones and skulls of animals are likely the foods that we ate which separated us from our ancestors. If we scavenged a corpse, the only meat that would have really been left that couldn't have been picked away by the coyotes, the vultures, the bugs, all the scavengers would have been the bone marrow and the brain tissue. The only way to access these two foods is to break the bones. And of these larger animals, they are very difficult, if not impossible to break for any animal without the use of tools or fire. If you take this bone, you can barely cut through it with a bone saw. Imagine trying to crack it open with a rock. But if you take this bone and you throw it in a fire, the bone becomes very brittle and it breaks down. Through our use of tools and fire, we were able to procure very nutrient dense bone marrow and brain tissue from these carcasses. Bone marrow is unique in its nutritional profile. It has every vitamin our body needs. Vitamin A, E, K2, small amounts of vitamin C, as well as minerals and elements. It also has fatty acids, linoleic and linolenic, the precursors to EPA and DHA. The only food you would really need to eat outside of bone marrow might be a protein source and then you just have to get your vitamin D3 from the sun. It is a very nutritionally complete source of vitamins and minerals as are other very high quality animal foods. Bone marrow in particular is something that I really enjoy the taste of and it is a food that was prized by our ancestors and one of their favorite parts of the animal. Here is a grass fed bone I got from Whole Foods and just had them cut it canoe style. Uh, I let this sit to room temperature. If this is cold, the marrow is very hard to scoop out. Uh, if it's warm, it's much easier to get out. And if it's hot when you cook it, this actually melts into liquid fat. I personally prefer the taste of this raw. It has a very mild smell to it and the taste is also very mild. This is like, it's like a treat. It's like beef butter. The texture is not as soft as butter and the flavor is milder than butter. Sometimes I just put a little bit of honey on this. It's really good. Most of the time I just throw it on the grill, melt the outside a bit, warm it up, and then sprinkle some salt on top. In regards to concerns about getting sick, the only thing you have to be worried about is cross-contamination from the butcher saw. So what I do is before I ate this, I scrape the outside off. And if you really want to be safe, do what I usually do. Throw it on the grill for a minute or two on each side just to burn all the bacteria off the outside. Oh man, I can't eat another bite. I, mean, I didn't, this was a really deep bone. So uh, this is so calorie dense, it's ridiculous. And this was probably like five or six tablespoons of pure fat, like seven, 800 calories. I don't want to eat anything else. I mean, yeah, I could always go for a steak and eat more, but you know, if this was all I ate for the week, I could probably sustain myself off of it. The nutrient density of animal foods is something that's so apparent and how these foods taste in their natural state for me really reinforces the carnivore diet.
So you could take those bones, roast them, and then make a bone broth out of them. What I actually do with my bone marrow is I scoop it out, I put it in jars, and I let it ferment on my counter. So this is been going for like a week and a half, I think. And oh man, is it funky. Oh, it's like, it's essentially rotten meat. It smells almost like cheese. Every single indigenous group consume these fermented animal foods as the fermentation process increases the vitamin K2 content. Now, the reason I specifically like fermenting bone marrow is because to me it makes sense. If we found a corpse like a week or two later and the bones were still intact, when we crack those bones open, if they were in the summer heat for weeks to maybe a month or two, they would have been like pure rotten stinky cheese. So to me, there's definitely an element of fermented foods missing in modern diets that I'm trying to replicate. I'll taste that in a day of eating video. I'll show you guys that another time. I ate, I just ate 700 calories of bone marrow. I really don't want to eat any more fat today. So as I said earlier, the bone marrow is a nutritionally complete source for the most part from a fat soluble vitamin perspective. It's an excellent source of caloric nutrition. It's a great way to get your 70 to 80% fat on a carnivore diet. Uh, if you guys are looking for this stuff, the problem is that I didn't touch on earlier is grain fed bone marrow is inedible. If you taste grain fed bone marrow compared to this, it doesn't taste good. Uh, I'll link an old video at the end of this where I compared the different ones, but unfortunately, when you feed a cow grain, it ruins the profile of the fat and the organs so much that they don't taste good anymore. It's like the texture is different. It has an acrid taste to it. And the grass fed bone marrow is much softer, much smoother. It has this nutty butterscotchiness to it. And that's the upper femur bone. Uh, usually you don't get access to the lower leg bone of the cow. Sometimes they don't sell that. But apparently that part of the bone is the best tasting one. It has a very liquidy, apparently marrow that's creamier and softer. So maybe I'll try to get my hands on that in the future and try for you guys. That was one of the favorite foods of the First Nation Alaskans. Uh, again, again, if you guys are looking for this stuff, going to your local butcher, asking if they can source grass-fed marrow bones from maybe Australia, New Zealand. I don't know where they would get them. Uh, I just picked these up at Whole Foods. They just had to have them. I normally don't buy these. Uh, I usually have to get cheaper or easier to access sources of fat. I know you can go to farmer's markets and ask the farms. And if you don't really have access to bone marrow in the diet, you're not missing out on any nutrients specifically, but you definitely want to try to consume most of your calories from high quality animal foods to get that high and balanced fat soluble vitamin profile. The nice thing about having access to foods like this is I know if I'm eating all this quality grass fed bone marrow every day, I'm eating all this quality grass fed beef, I don't really have to worry about supplementing things like cod liver oil, eating some fish, and, and anything else outside of the ordinary. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and share the video. If you guys have any in-depth questions and you'd like to support me, definitely check out my Patreon. I also have some exclusive videos on my Patreon that you guys haven't seen. On my Amazon shop, I have products I use every day, from my seaweed to my vitamin D3, Frankie's Vol Grease. If any of you guys are interested, check out my Amazon shop. On frank definocom uh, my hygiene products are on sale. Uh, so check that out, frank definocom I'm wearing all that stuff right now. Eh, eh, eh. And last but not least, if you want to see me argue with other carnivore dieters, check out my Twitter. Joe Rogan follows me. If you don't, probably should. Uh, on Instagram, I post selfies, funny stuff. And last but not least, you guys can contact me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving your overall health through my email, frankatofano at gmail.com or through the contact form below on my website.